All right, so this video is about becoming a millionaire the boring way, the slow and steady way, the Warren Buffett way. And let me be very clear, I'm not against these get rich quick schemes and all these gurus that are out there that are promising you $6,000 in a week. It may work for some, but I'm going to stick with the boring way. The boring way to a million is the index fund slash ETF way. In this video, I'm only going to be talking about ETFs or exchange traded funds. And towards the end of the video, I'll show you my account and some of the ETFs that I personally hold. But first, what is an exchange traded fund? Simply put, an exchange traded fund or an ETF is a basket of investments like stocks or bonds. An exchange traded fund lets you invest in a lot of securities all at once. It sounds gibberish, right? So here's an example. Here's an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index. It is perhaps the most well-known ETF out there, measuring the value of the stocks of 500 largest publicly traded companies in the US. And if you invest in an ETF that tracks the S&P 500, you're essentially investing in all 500 companies at the same time. Or you're holding a very small piece of all these publicly traded companies. Yes, this includes big names like Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, you name it. You will be invested in all the companies within the index. And that's the biggest advantage of investing in index funds, aka diversification. You've probably heard the saying that don't put all your eggs in one basket. So with exchange traded funds, you get instant diversification. An example of a fund that tracks the S&P 500 index is the SPY or SPY ETF, the one we just talked about. If you purchase one share of the SPY ETF, your risk is really spread across 500 companies and across different sectors. S&P 500 is focused on US companies, but you can also buy ETFs that track the stock markets all around the world. Additionally, you can buy ETFs that track bond and real estate markets all around the world with just the click of a button. Here's another fund, VGT. This fund tracks the technology sector. If I open the holdings tab, you will see that most, if not all companies over here are technology names. Now that you know what an exchange traded fund is, let's look at some realistic returns and see how to reach that million dollar milestone. Though the market fluctuates a lot, the S&P 500 has generated 10% average annual return for investors. This includes all the recessions in the past 96 years or so. That's pretty good. And a common strategy by most long-term investors, including myself, is to regularly invest money into an S&P 500 index fund and watch the money grow. Remember, the returns are somewhere around 10%. That means the S&P 500 index could go down 10% in one year and then go up 20, 30, 40% the next few years. Let's run these numbers through an investment calculator and see what I mean. This calculator is from investor.gov. You can really use any compound interest calculator online, but I'll be sure to link this one in the description box. Let's say I start with a $1,000 initial investment. I invest $500 per month and I continue to do that for 30 years. And for interest rate, I will put 10%, which we assume is the future average return per year. Click on calculate and bam. In 30 years, I could potentially have a million dollars from literally doing one minute of work every week. Now, the first pushback that I get from posting this kind of stuff on my Facebook page is, who the heck wants to wait for 30 years? And my answer is always the same. If you want to follow this strategy, there are no shortcuts. If you want the account to grow quicker, you just have to increase your contributions. So coming back to this screen, what if I have $1,000 to spare every month? And instead of 30 years, I put 25 years. And by the end of 25th year, you could potentially be looking at a $1.1 million portfolio. And this is the concept that many people find very difficult to understand. The concept of compound interest. The longer you give your money to grow, the more time your money has to grow into something substantial. So going back to the first example, if I change the time to 40 years, you could be looking at $2.7 million. Play around with the calculator and see what numbers work for you and your unique situation. And this is the reason why it is so important to open a brokerage account for your kids the moment they are born. Because they have one very important thing that is going for them, and that is time. Now let's look at ETFs more closely. Every ETF has its own ticker. SPY is the ticker for ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index. Looking at it more closely, if you purchase one share of this fund, it will cost you around $370 today. There is a dividend payment of around $1.50. And the dividend payment is a very important number. First of all, real quickly, what is a dividend? Think of it as profit sharing. A lot of these companies that you're holding pay dividends or a sum of money to its shareholders. 
So in the case of SPY, you're getting $1.50 per quarter for every share that you hold. And instead of using this $1.50 to purchase candy, what if you reinvest this $1.50 to purchase more shares of the same ETF? Well, $1.50 will only get you 0.00431 additional shares. But now, instead of one share, you have 1.00431 shares. Doesn't sound too tempting, does it? But imagine if you do this over the months and over the years. And this really is the simple concept of compound interest, where the interest you earn then earns interest on itself. And for this to really work, you have to give your money some time to grow, as demonstrated in the examples. This is a slow, steady, but proven way to build wealth. So we talked about the S&P 500 fund. What are some other funds that you can invest in? Here's a list that I have compiled and 90% of my portfolio is invested in these funds. I discuss why I picked these funds in detail in this video. So if you want details, definitely check it out. But the idea is to have a well diversified portfolio. About 60% of this list is focused on US based companies Then I could not ignore China and Europe. And lastly, some exposure to international and emerging markets. So again, this is a very well diversified portfolio, but if you only want to focus on US companies, you could just go with the first six. While we're talking about retirement, let's quickly touch on the Roth IRA. A Roth IRA is a tax advantaged retirement account where your money grows tax free. So if you're buying exchange traded funds and instead of a regular brokerage account, you buy them in your Roth IRA and let's say you retire at 60, the entire sum of your money is tax free. It's all your money. And if you do these transactions in a regular brokerage account, you could be looking at long-term capital gains. Before you dismiss this idea completely of investing for a couple of decades, remember, this is the average retirement saving by age in the US. And if you're half decent at math, you probably know that averages are skewed by extremes at both end. So if you look at the median retirement savings by age, it usually gives a better picture. And as you can see, this does not look very good. Investing in ETFs is a very boring way to become a millionaire. But who cares? For everyday investors looking to build wealth, low-cost, exchange-traded funds is the way to go. And whatever happens in the market, commit to staying invested and continuing to invest over the months and years. 